My husband cheated on me and I'm okay with it. On Friday, I, 26 female, caught my husband, 32 male, with his coworker in our bedroom. I didn't feel shocked. I had suspected it for a while, but he waved it away. After the incident, he had been on his best behavior for four days and finally wanted to talk to me about it. I told him I was okay with it and he was shocked. He cried and was angry, asking if I never loved him in the first place because apparently he did. I find it extremely ironic given he was the one who's been cheating on me for over a year. To be clear about the situation, I'm not polygamous slash polyamorous or interested in having a three-way in any sense. Our life is nice. We paid off the house. No kids yet. I make enough to support myself in case we get divorced. I just don't want to. I still like him and I don't care if he went on a bus of hookers as long as he didn't bring home an STD. I'm not interested in sleeping with anyone else, sexually or romantically, but I don't mind if he has sex with a dozen other people as long as he comes home at night and sleeps beside me. He has been crying slash screaming every time he calls me, but he drove out to the motel after I told him this, saying he hates himself and there is something extremely wrong with me. He's living with his mom, commuting an hour to work, and I've never felt more free. My brother went missing, and I feel like I will never get over it. Two years ago, my little brother went missing. His 20th birthday was last week, and I think about him constantly. So does my family. Ever since he went missing, life just has not been the same. It's literally eating me alive. To get a little insight, he went to a party and left around 3 a.m. Of all things, I'm the one who got the last contact with him of my family. Can you please come take me home? Whenever I read this message, I cry. I feel so guilty. I didn't even text him back, just left him on red and drove towards him. Next thing I know, I tried to call him with no response. His phone was off. We tried contacting him 24-7. Then we went to the police. Then we put up missing posters. Then we tried our look on social media. Then we tried contacting him again. Then we went to look for him, and then everything went quiet. I feel like I'm still in a sort of trance. I don't know how I should keep going without him. I feel so miserable when I think about him. I feel guilty. I feel sad. I'm his big bro. I should have protected him. I should have texted him back. I should have at least asked him where he is. And now he's gone. I can't talk with anyone from my family. My mother is heartbroken. My siblings always ask where he is. I have to be strong for them, but it's so hard. I don't know how to keep going. I don't think I have to mention what thoughts are going through my head. I don't want to think about what may have happened to him, and I physically can't even write it down. I just can't and don't want to imagine it. It makes me full of rage and sadness, not even speaking about how I feel about the people who were questioned and I feel suspicious about. Fuck, this sucks. I know it's pointless, but Nick, if for some reason you're reading this, I love you, we all love you, and we miss you. Life hasn't been the same without you. Please come home. Am I the asshole for yelling at my husband for making my daughter feel bad? Disclaimer, this is not my story. My oldest daughter, May, is 16. She has a job and has had it for about five months. Out of all of our children, she's the most mature. She's also good at saving, but she rarely spends money on things she enjoys and instead keeps it in her bank account. My husband wanted to have her start paying her phone bill immediately. It would be $50 a month, but I said no and eventually compromised to the beginning of October. My husband is her stepfather and is very money tight and he tells her to pay for everything she wants. Now, I agree with this somewhat as she should be responsible so she's ready for college, but he wants her to pay for everything. Anytime she asks for something, he'll respond with, you have money, buy it yourself. Now fast forward to today, May has been out of town on a trip with her class and she was going to be gone for a week. Because this is a national event that happens every year and they're in the city, everything is very expensive. She has a credit card under her name that is connected to my account and I said she could use it for her meals. Am I the asshole for yelling at my husband for making my daughter feel bad? Disclaimer, this is not my story. She has a credit card under her name that is connected to my account and I said she could use it for her meals but snacks and souvenirs she would have to buy on her own. She called earlier and we were talking while my husband was in the room. She started complaining about how expensive everything was and joked about being bankrupt when she returned from her trip. I told her not to worry about it and said that she could use her credit card for whatever. My husband says, stop guilt tripping your mother to give you money. Whatever you want, you can buy yourself. She was quiet and said she wasn't asking for anything. He then repeated, don't guilt trip your mother. How can you be morally okay with that? She said she wasn't calling to ask for money, that she wanted to complain and that she was going to hang up. I took her off speaker to tell her that it was fine and she swore up and down that she wasn't trying to guilt trip me and that she was going to pretend the call never happened and that it was fine and then she hung up. I was so mad I yelled at him and told him that he was being ridiculous and that she was still a child. I left before he could respond and my daughter's been apologizing to me every time she buys a meal because she thinks it's too much. Am I the asshole for demanding my fiancé to stop teaching our kids bad manners? My fiancé Lola.
My fiance Lola and I have been together for five years, engaged for a little over a year, and we have twins, boy and girl, two and a half years old. Our wedding is in two months. Lola usually takes care of feeding the kids in the morning since I work early, and so I never noticed this until recently. I took a week vacation from work to just spend time at home with my kids and Lola, and started to notice something that bothered me. Lola has, <laughs> Lola has been teaching our kids bad table manners and sees nothing wrong with it. I haven't noticed this before, as they don't eat this type of food for lunch, dinner, snacks, or eat it all the time. So I guess I just missed it, as I wasn't home or she fed them other things on the weekends. This morning, I was helping Lola make breakfast, and then I got the kids ready while she brought their food out for them. As they were getting ready to eat, I noticed they didn't have forks, spoons, so I told Lola I would get them, and she said there was no need. I watched instead as she gave the kids tortillas that she ripped into pieces, and they were using their bare hands to grab the food using the pieces of the tortilla. I asked her what she was doing, and she should be giving them utensils, but she seemed shocked that I was concerned and said that that's how they usually eat. I told her that she was teaching them bad manners and making them think it was okay to just grab food with their hands. They're two and a half. Relax. Chill out. She told me they do that anyway when they have chips or grapes or tacos and pizza and listed a bunch of other snacks and fast food you eat without utensils. But I pointed out that those things are usually made to be eaten quickly or on the road, like fast food, so utensils aren't needed. She said I was being offensive by calling her way of eating gross and saying it was having bad manners. But I do think it's gross to see someone grabbing at food with their bare hands like that. They're babies. Oh my god, god forbid you travel to other countries where their main utensil is their hand. She said she grew up eating like that and would always use tortillas to make things like eggs or meat, rice, beans, and that it wasn't gross because she always made the kids wash their hands before they ate. I'm telling you, whenever my mom, the best food I ever had was food that my mom fed me from her hand. That like, I don't know what it is about your mother's hand. When my mom would feed me like rice and meat and stuff and she would grab it in her hand and feed me, it just tasted so good. And he, this guy's just being so judgmental. I ended up giving my kids forks for them to eat, which they didn't want to use, which made me even more frustrated with her because now they're used to this. It's not like she's giving them macaroni and cheese to eat with her hand. She was using tortillas. Like what? Lola has been really annoyed the rest of the day and wouldn't let me help her with lunch. And earlier she was walking around the house speaking to someone, probably her sister, in Spanish about me. And I'm starting to feel a bit annoyed. So am I the asshole? So he puts an edit here. He says, I will add that the kids can use utensils and use them with foods like soups, pastas, etc. I just fear that allowing them to continue using their hands will make them used to it. I'm at the asshole for not wanting to change from my religious roommate. Let's call my roommates Harriet and Tommy. We're going to be moving into an apartment next year and my friend Harriet is Muslim and I love and support her because she gets tons of shit for it. Me and Tommy aren't religious, so we don't follow any teachings or belief, and we eat and drink anything we want. Harriet said that when we move in, she only wants halal food in the house, and I guess I can live with that. However, I only eat certain textures and specific foods from certain places, and if that changes, I freak out, and same goes for Tommy. Another problem is we came across is Harriet doesn't want any alcohol in the house, but the issue is I'm a mixologist, and it's a passion of mine. They also want me to quit smoking, which I get. I do like to do other things and I don't want to stop that. However, whenever Harriet's parents come over, Tommy and I have to pretend that we're married. The thing is, we're all very queer. Unfortunately, Harriet's parents don't know, so she can't come out. When I told her I don't want to do all these things, she got upset. And Tommy even got upset with me as well. So am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for only taking my nieces in and not their dad after my sister passed away? My female 33, sister female 36 passed away a month ago because of cancer. It's devastating and words can't express how we feel. Her husband struggled to pay off debts and has asked me and my husband to take him and my nieces age 13 and 16 in for some time. I have to say that I'm not on good terms with him and we've had more than our fair share of disagreements in the past. He tried to sue me and my husband for my own mother's house which I'm living in with my husband and daughter. But he claimed he needed to pay for my sister's treatment and this was the only way to get it. So I only agreed to take my nieces in. Am I the asshole for only taking my nieces in and not their dad after my sister passed away? He tried to negotiate saying his daughters are grieving and need him. I said he could see them during visits and that was it and my husband agreed with me at first. My brother-in-law showed up with my nieces days ago and I only let the girls in. He tried to talk me into letting him stay and we had a huge argument and the girls went inside crying. They said they want their dad and my husband is backing out of this saying we might be making a mistake. My aunt berated me saying I messed up entirely here. I argued it's my home and I don't feel comfortable with him staying after what he's done. She called me selfish and bitter and now the girls are quiet. 